from the U.S. Geological Survey. This is the USGS Oregon Science Podcast. You're listening to episode 15 of the USGS Oregon Science Podcast for Tuesday, February 8, 2011. In this month's episode, we discuss how 3D modeling is used to examine groundwater in the Columbia Plateau. USGS hydrologist Eric Burns describes how his team modeled the 53,000 square mile plateau, how this information is currently used, and what implications it has for the future. Join us as we explore how cutting edge science today is used to solve tomorrow's problems, only in this month's episode of the Oregon Science Podcast. Hello and welcome. I'm Steve Sobieszczyk, and you are listening to and watching the USGS Oregon Science Podcast. Uh, Today, I'm joined by USGS hydrologist Eric Burns. Uh, Eric is part of a team of USGS scientists who are modeling the aquifer system of the Columbia Plateau. Thank you so much for joining me today, Eric. Thanks, Steve. First off, Eric, uh, can you give us a little background on this study? The, the piece I'm going to talk to you about today is actually part of a much larger study funded by the U.S. Geological Survey Office of Groundwater. The overarching goal of this study is to understand the water resources in this area. The, uh, there's been some concern over the past you know, 20, 30 years in this area, even longer, because uh, declines have started in a lot of the water wells. So water levels are declining. This area is reliant on groundwater for a lot of, a lot of its industry, and to give you an example of that, last year, I think it was, uh, it's about $6 billion in agricultural production from the Washington area alone. Uh, with such a large area, how do you go about investigating the, the water resources for the Columbia Plateau? We, we use a couple of different tools. We collect a, a large amount of data. We, we do a lot of analysis of this data. But, but to really get a good look at it, we use some tools called models. And we use a couple of different types of models. One is a conceptual model. So the conceptual model is really just our, our general understanding of, of where water comes from and goes to and how it might move through the ground. Beyond that, you take that conceptual model and you move it into kind of the next tool that we have, which is a, a computer simulation model. And the computer simulation model, with that, what we do is we develop a sh- the shape of the system And then we know how water flows through geologic units. And so what we do is we simulate the physics of how water will flow through these units. And from that, uh, we can start to say, well, is the system behaving the way that that we observe? What type of geology is actually making up this Columbia Plateau? So three of the model units of the four are Columbia River basalt. The uh, last unit is kind of what we call a sedimentary overburden unit. If if you want to see kind of what... One of the lava flows looks like you can go into the Columbia River Gorge between Portland and, say, the Dalles, and you can see nice, nice examples of these, these lava flows, these you know, massive lava flows. Can you describe a little bit of each of these different layers and what they're composed of and, and how they function and the way it's been mapped? So this first surface is the, the older bedrock top. And if you take a look at it, what the two things that we did with this is, is you can see this, this top surface, but you can also see the rivers. We left them on on top of the whole thing. So the distance between the rivers and this surface is actually what's filled with the geologic units. If we turn on a second layer here, it's that uh, first basalt unit. And this one's called the Grand Ronde Basalt Unit. And it's actually the thickest of the lava flows. It's, uh, it constitutes about 90% of the lava that came, of all the units that we're going to talk about. As we turn on a, another layer here, this is the Wanapum basalt, which is the next unit up that we modeled. It's another basalt. It's you know pretty obviously a smaller amount of lava. And because it didn't go as far, we believe it might have a different control on flow. If we turn on the, the next layer, it's actually the last basalt. It's the Saddle Mountains basalt unit. If you look at it, it's, again, a smaller amount of lava, and it doesn't cover anywhere near the same area as the, as the older ones. Okay, so if we turn on that last uh, piece, that's the sedimentary overburden, and you'll see that it really doesn't cover the whole area. What it's done here is it, it really has just filled in the valleys that were created in the top of these lavas. And, and so this is, is really the heart of what we've done, is these, these three models. What uh, do you actually envision the use for this groundwater, this aquifer model. People use it to 
uh, we'll use it to try to figure out where they might get water, you know, which units. Um, the, the states, the municipalities uh, use it to figure out, well, where's the water coming from because they have to manage w water in the state so they can assign water rights. But one of the kind of fun things that we did with this one that, that we haven't done in the past is we developed a map interface that you that you can anybody can play with. Basically, someone can go to this link, and here I'll, I'll drive it a little bit to, sh to show you what's going on. If you look at it right here, it's kind of faded out. It's the, the geologic map, which is basically what geologic unit is at the land surface in our simulated model. And there's a little slider bar here. You can move up and down, and you can make it darker or lighter to make it easier to see. But, but this is our, our simulated area. And then the next thing you can do is anywhere in this area that you're interested in, like say maybe you want to drill a well and you want to know what you might encounter and where you might encounter it. You can click on this and it will generate this well log here on the left. So another thing you can do is click on another spot over on the map here and then go over here to this button and, and hit create cross section. If you do that, what, what it does is it, it draws a picture here and this is a geologist's tool to see what the subsurface looks like. There's, uh, if you notice here on the cross-section tool, there's two windows. If you're really interested in something within one, you can even zoom in on it here. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today. Thanks, Steve. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. You can check out all the links we talked about in today's podcast in our show transcripts. You can find them at our website, or.usgs.gov slash podcasts. If our monthly podcast doesn't feed your need for USGS-related news here in Oregon, you can follow us daily on Twitter at USGS underscore OR. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or complaints about the USGS Oregon Science Podcast, please feel free to email us at OregonPodcast at USGS.gov. Thank you for listening. To hear more about other research the USGS is doing around the country or around the world, Check out any one of our other USGS social media outlets at usgs.gov slash social media. There, you can listen to other USGS podcasts, as well as find links to USGS on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, and Flickr. This podcast is a product of the U.S. Geological Survey, Department of the Interior.